Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Desktop December, part 23, where I'm looking at the Elacab desktop. So Elacab is an Arabic version of KDE4. Now you have to remember back in KDE4, the right to left language support is not as good as it is now in the Plasma 5 desktop. They seem to have done a little bit more to the desktop than just making the KDE desktop suitable for the right to left language. And is also available in other languages, oh, most important here because I don't think I could continue to review this desktop in Arab. I, I, I don't know Arabic. Never read it, never learnt it, don't know anything. <laughs> so, yes, fortunately I can switch across to English. There's not much information about Elacab. I know from the SourceForge page it was last updated in around 2014. And I've installed it here using the pre-compiled dev packages that they've provided on top of Kubuntu 14.04. Seem to figure it might be a better idea to do it that way rather than have to drag in extra dependencies from another desktop or building it from scratch because it's sharing the Qt4 framework that KDE would have. So, makes my life easier. So we're starting with the default Arabic view of the desktop. Now I'm saying that specifically because the icon launcher appears on the right hand side and you've got the right to the left language support here. So it's all kind of perhaps the way you might appreciate it if you do read from right hand side to left hand side. It doesn't seem to have all the Arabic language support there. Now I wonder if that may be more to do with the fact I haven't installed the extra language support from Kubuntu. So we've got a couple of shortcuts on the top panel. We can go to the settings, terminal, and open the file manager. Now it's not Dolphin. Well, it looks very similar to Dolphin. So I wonder if they've taken a lot of open source code from Dolphin and built their own file manager from it. And we can see the menus also appear on the right hand side except for the console where it'll appear on the left hand side. So I'm just going to open one more application and we'll take a look at how that looks. So it really is dependent on how the applications are set and probably how the languages are set, probably within the operating system, because I haven't done that. So let's go and change to English where I'll be able to read it and continue on with the review. All right, there's the menu I was looking for. And I can imagine all my Arabic viewers going, yeah, click on there, come on, you're in the right place. Yes, but I don't know, I don't know. Right, so now I've got to exit this desktop and log back in. So, ah, oh, fortunately it shows it there, so yeah, I can log out. Fortunately it's changed some of the language already, so yeah, log out and log back in. I meant to mention about this dock at the bottom of the screen now, this appears to be their own custom one. It's got the option of changing the theme and the colouring of it. So I can change the position of it as well, excellent. Now the panel at the top of the screen you can move that around as well. So yeah, position, top of the desktop or bottom of the desktop. And we can change the appearance. So I've got a bit of customization option here. You'll notice on the English layout now, the launcher is on the left hand side and it reads correct now for the left to right language. So with the launcher, you can navigate around the folders and then open up the applications there. You can change your icon size from small or large. You can also get to the file manager and home folder. Now there's a text searcher. It's a bit of a weird behavior, this one. Let's just close it, I'll go back in. So if I start typing, so F, I, come on, Firefox. And after three key presses, it does start searching. But weirdly, if I leave the menu, and go back in, it leaves my search there. How very reminiscent of the behavior of the LXQt application launcher. So I'll delete that and let's start typing something else. So console, K-O-N, oh, there we go. There's no option of moving around with the keyboard. You have to use the mouse to navigate to this list. So it's 316 meg of RAM in memory with a total of 674 in cache overall. We'll take another look at that file manager. So what happens if I drag the application to the side of the screen? I guess it resizes in the arrow snap like effect. And you can see when an application takes up the space where the panel was, it disappears. So move that way, the panel will come back. So we can also resize two quadrants. That's like the standard behavior of the KDE4 desktop. So I drag the application to the top of the screen and it maximizes. So this file manager is so similar to Dolphin, except one of the first immediate differences, you double click by default. I've also got Dolphin on the system, so look, we can just look at that and say, how does that differ in the behavior? Well, that single click there. Let's go and look at some picture files I've got on the system. Good, like Dolphin, I've got the preview on the right hand side. If I open up the application, so let's go to properties, open with, I'm gonna set Gwenview as default. I'm only doing it this way because I know by default it'll open in Firefox. Excellent, Gwenview image viewer. 
What features did we have back in Gwenview on KD4? Have I got the ability to crop? Yes, I do. So I'm crop the image and select crop. Decide, no, I don't like that and undo it. So you can also rotate, resize and do red eye reduction. Some basic image editing tools. You can navigate around the different images by pressing left to right on the keyboard arrow keys. Pressing escape gives us the file manager view. And I can rename the images as well by pressing F2. It mimics the behavior of Dolphin. Can I do tabbed browsing in this file manager? No, it doesn't appear that I... Oh, yes I can, but not by pressing the middle mouse button. That's a bit annoying. It's a change in the default behavior. Let's open up a video. It doesn't seem to display the picture for some reason. I don't know why that could be a virtual box issue though. I can hear the music playing. I was just checking if there are multimedia controls here. So no, they're not on the panel. Is there on the launcher? No. Got the option to fix the application to the launcher. So I wonder if I can have individual view preferences on the folders. Let's change that to icon view and proceed forward. Now can I, so can I change the detail view here? Go back up a folder. No, nah. it's just a global view switcher. Let's have a look in the Elocab settings. So as you can see, we've got the country region language. This is what I couldn't read earlier in Arabic. So we've got a default choice of Arabic, English, and French. Default applications, yeah. Uh, where we display notifications. Screen locker image and date and time. There's a few themes pre-installed by default. And it looks like we have the option of creating our own custom themes. You can choose the icon theme and cursor themes. So you can change the application appearance. That seems very specific on the colouring we can use, as well as being able to choose from the list. It seems to lack some of the granular settings that you would get in KDE on the application appearance, because in Oxygen you can change the size of the scroll bar. And that's the keyboard settings, and the auto start, but it is more of a simplified view of the settings really, because I suppose in KDE there are well, a massive amount of settings you can change really, and it does take a bit of navigating your way through. I do have the KDE system settings here, but I think that's a leftover from Kubuntu. And this is what I was talking about with the more granular settings we can change within Oxygen. Yeah, you've got the scroll bar size. Okay, and apply. But that was me just being really fussy there. I think back in its day, Elacab would really fix a problem that KDE had with the right to left language support. But now that feature exists in Plasma 5, it does make this desktop somewhat deprecated. But it's not just that feature we have here, we also have a different style for the KDE desktop, with a panel at the top of the screen and a dock at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, it's a different view than you would normally get. Overall, I don't have any major criticisms with the desktop. Some of the bits I was picking around with in the settings are not really much of an issue because I could just go across to the KDE system settings and change what I want. So yeah, no major issue there. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.